day it seemed like he was heavily influenced by Van Diesel. Nothing can be done. I don't know which ballots they are. The question is, what went wrong? More than 200 votes cast in the wrong races in Davidson County. Early voting has been in full swing for almost two weeks. You voted. Thank you. But on Tuesday, Nashville Davidson County Elections Administrator Jeff Roberts says he learned of an error that caused hundreds of early voters to be given the wrong ballots. We had 190 that were impacted in the congressional races. We had 16 that were impacted in the state Senate races and we had six that were impacted in the state house. The impacted ballots can't be changed, so ballots cast in the wrong races will be counted. Nothing can be done. Uh, so if you, you think about it, we've voted 45,000 plus people early voting. I don't know which ballots they are. The issue comes after Republican lawmakers split up Davidson County into three districts. As a result, some voters were grouped incorrectly. Election officials say they worked overnight to get the issue fixed, but for some, it's already created distrust in the process. And you mean to tell me that you have one job to do, one job, and you only got to do it three times this year? And you couldn't get it right. Democratic leaders and candidates held a press conference today asking for more accountability. And it shouldn't be this hard to vote in Tennessee. There was also confusion at Casa Safran with some thinking voting machines were down. For an hour, people had to manually verify their voter information by filling out this document. Officials say they recognize their mistakes could lead to a lack of trust in the election. Their hope is people keep voting. We said yes, there was a problem. We fixed it. We feel confident that the issues will not recur, that that gives the voters some sense that the folks that you've charged with putting on an election are really here to make it happen for you. After this election, Robert says he's committed to pinpoint exactly how the problem occurred to make sure it never happens again. Need a ticket fixed? Where do you go? Well, right now we've learned that an ethics review reveals that the Nolensville police chief may well have fixed tickets for city officials. Top officials in the city of Nolensville face censure or even termination after a new review found that the police chief fixed tickets in order to keep commissioners out of trouble. Hello. Hello. How's it going? Hi. Good. How are you? Good. December 11th, 2020. The woman in the SUV is Nolensville Commissioner Lisa Garamoni, and she's just been pulled over by Nolensville PD. It's 30, so there y'all were doing 53. I wasn't paying attention. Routine pretty much sums up the next few minutes. Driver's license, proof of insurance, and the registration for your car, okay? Those then the officer asked Garamoni where she had traveled from. Okay. She went to the thing at um, the Beer's house tonight with... Oh, was that the one down in uh, Summerlin? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. I heard them talking about it. We had a couple of guys down there. Down there with Chief Parker. Okay. It was faint, but clear enough for the officer to hear Garamoni name drop his boss, Police Chief Roddy Parker. A few moments later, while the officer is writing a ticket, his partner asks about the driver. What's your last name? Garamone. Oh my God. She's going to recount. What? She's on the board, ain't she? Is she? Oh my good gosh. Well, Chief will be calm out there. We'll have to avoid this cell. Officers went ahead with the ticket anyway, figuring that whatever happens next, well, that's for the Chief to straighten out. After all, it's not the first time. He already called me about one. Yes, indeed he did. The moment you sponsor a job on Indeed, you I wrote one of them too. Yeah, how'd that go? He took care of it, I guess. We now know that days later, Garamoni's ticket was pulled by Chief Parker after it was already written and now had the words void across the front. But there was just one other thing. Todd said, yeah, she showed up on one of their calls drunk. Two months earlier. Hey, buddy, you all right? Nolensville police responded to this car stuck in a ditch. Then we see another car drive up and Commissioner Garamoni get out. Hey, I just want to make sure everything's like, yeah. what's going on? Garamoni is now suing four people, including two, who filed public records requests to get access to this video because she says they've spread lies about what happened. 
The lawsuit says she was drinking at a friend's party but claims someone else was driving her car when they left for the store. They came back and found this. Is there anything we can do to help them out? Or? Garamoni says she was concerned that someone from the party had been involved in an accident, so she asked the driver to stop. A couple minutes go by, and now we see even the driver of the wrecked car confused as to why she was there. Well, I'm just curious because, like, I'm the commissioner, so I was like... I don't know what commissioner means, so... <laughs> there was one point where we do see someone leave Garamoni's car, but from the passenger's side. When Garamoni returned to her car, she had to ask cops where her friend went. He got out walked that way. So once again, she goes back to the driver's side before leaving. Now, listen to what police said right after. Commissioner or not, tell chief next time her is drinking and driving on the rest of her. Officers later said they never actually saw Garamoni climb in the driver's seat or smelled any alcohol. Still, her very presence didn't make much sense. Almost two years later, and after complaints from people in Nolansville, the city commission requested an ethics review. This 10-page report focused on Garamoni, Police Chief Parker, and Vice Mayor Wendy Cook Mucci, who turns out back in June of 2020, was also pulled over for running a stop sign. All right, I did start to cite you for not stopping, okay? okay. Cook Mucci was given a standard citation. The copy the courts have was written as a warning. That's clearly official misconduct. Okay? News it's Channel 5 legal expert Nick Leonardo says it may even qualify as tampering with official government documents, which either way could still be a felony. The fact that you have a, a police chief who is giving special treatment or favorable treatment to elected officials that are in charge of his budget uh, is very problematic. Chief Parker told attorneys he doesn't remember avoiding any recent citations other than Garamoni's. When asked why he did it, the 40-year law enforcement veteran said he believed he had the authority to do so. Plus, the city just went through a tense election, so to avoid any issues that could make the city look bad, it was better to void this ticket for a newly elected official. A person might reasonably interpret all this as uh, being intended to influence someone in their position as commissioners. Garamoni kept relatively quiet at this meeting while Cook Mucci tried to set the record straight. I have never once in a pullover stop said my, you know, I'm a commissioner, I am the vice mayor. I've never said anything like that. I've never even hinted at trying to get some sort of favor or that kind of thing. Attorneys ultimately found that Chief Parker may have violated state law, but that the statute of limitations for that offense already lapsed. They did conclude that all three parties violated the city's ethics policy because regardless if they knew what was happening, they accepted the outcome. Cook Mucci says she can't remember if it was a warning or not. Either way, she never paid. Garamoni eventually paid hers almost a year later and only days after the public records request was filed for these videos. Because without this body cam footage, there would I mean, no one would believe it. There wouldn't really be a story. Well, since you were 23 over the speed limit, it's... No, you're fine. Uh, you were doing what you're supposed to do. I was not. Ready, set, no go. Street racing. It's causing property damage, creating danger on the roads, and leading to lots of arrests in Nashville. If you follow these tire tracks, well, they'll lead you to some employees who say that street racing is targeting their place of business here in Laverne, and they are now left cleaning up the mess. Well, they're hoping with some recent arrests, it'll help put an end to all the racing. You wouldn't think just as soon as the sun comes down that the whole atmosphere changes and it's a threat. Yeah. You know, that's that's wild. It's a scene that looks like something out of a Hollywood film. It seemed like it was heavily influenced by Van Diesel. <laughs> <laughs> when these workers left work Friday night, they never believed they'll be coming in on Monday to a mess like this. We never this is knew. just a normal everyday company. There's five buildings here. You wouldn't think that after nine o'clock, you know, that it turns into a shooting gallery, tire burning, yeah, party. bonfire, partying, whatever Drinking. you want to do. Cleaning up after a weekend of street racing is not part of their job descriptions, but these two volunteered to do it. So it's been happening for months. I didn't yeah. even know that was going on. I yeah. mean, could you imagine, like, maybe you felt like going to work at four o'clock in the morning or something like that, and then you just, Accidentally, you know, you just roll into straight up chaos. Sky 5 captured the moments when car after car drove into the back parking lot. You can see a U-Haul pickup truck and a car doing donuts. 
From meeting up in Antioch to leaving tire tracks in Laverne, these cars cruise the streets, but police on the ground and in the air were not too far behind them. Well, if enough of them get locked up, it'll stop. Metro Police and THP troopers made four arrests and all faced several charges, including felony evading arrest. These workers say they just want the racing to stop before someone gets seriously hurt or even killed. They need to hire some kind of security firm. In Laverne, Kelsey Gibbs, News Channel 5. So where can you park in a busy city like downtown Nashville? That may expand a bit because there's a proposal to eliminate minimum parking requirements in Music City. Currently, property owners are required to provide a minimum number of parking spots in order to operate. This bill would eliminate that requirement. If approved, individual developers and business owners would decide how much space they want to put towards parking. The change applies to the so-called urban zoning overlay, which includes Germantown, Edge Hill, 12 South, and some of East Nashville. Supporters say building parking is expensive, and eliminating it would make more room for affordable housing and make communities more walkable. Opponents express concerns that the change would lead to even more cars spilling onto residential streets. When we over prioritize cars and parking, that has an implication on housing. It has an implication on walkability and bikeability. For the cost of two parking spaces, we can build one high quality affordable apartment. And I would much rather put those resources towards places for people to live than to park a car. It cannot be a one size fits all for all the neighborhoods across the UZO. We're not all downtown. The key component in this minimum parking is the public transit system, and we're not there. While council members approved it at the meeting on Tuesday, this still has to go through one more vote before it's finalized. The University of Tennessee now is the number one football team ranked in the country. Big game coming up this Saturday against the number three ranked Georgia Bulldogs. Who you got? Oh yeah, Tennessee's gonna win. I'm Nick Barris, that's the news. Like and subscribe on YouTube.